What's up and welcome to the first HTML5 GameMaker MMO tutorial and for this we're going to be using 39JS which is a little bit extension uh, made by TGMG on GameMaker forms and uh, his github name is Amori40 and I'm going to be linking both of these in the description. We're going to be using this to program our MMO and this is the engine that will be basically the networking engine that will be running off the actual game engine will all be will be programming all that from scratch other than what I've already made which is a very tiny amount so basically what 39JS is is they took 39DLL and made something that works extremely similar and 39DLL is basically it's a lot like this but it only works with .exe this only works with HTML5 so you're not going to be exporting to .exe, Android, iOS, any of that you can only export to HTML5 if you want the networking to work and it will work if you open it up on say like your Android browser you'll still be able to play on your Android but it's not fun to play it through the browser let me tell you it scrolls around a lot it doesn't work very well so this is mainly going to be for developing um, an MMO that you play in your browser on your computer so to, uh, to get started I'm just going to show you what I've made I'm hopefully not to compile it again looks like I'm gonna have to so I'll do that uh, just one second so first things first, it's going to connect to the server, which uh, does take a little while, which is why I like to make a little connecting screen so you know that your game's not frozen, it's connecting. You see here, we got this green little guy here, which is the first player to connect to our server, and then over here, we get, we're going to have another one connect up. So you can see we got these two guys right here just bobbing their heads up and down, and they can't really do anything other than connect and disconnect, but they have randomly generated colors, which is, I feel like... For a nice little simple game like this, which is probably not going to have a login or sign up or any stats that are saved, it's a good idea to have the randomly generated colors because it's going to help us differentiate or uh, you know be able to tell the different players. You know, it's very easy to identify, and changing making custom colors is very easy. Basically, all you have to do is have a sprite that the base sprite needs to be black and white. Then all you do is just uh, do a nice little. It's called a. Uh, this draw function right here, uh, draw sprite extension. I believe that's extended is what that means. And it's like the draw sprite function, but it lets you input image X scale, the rotation, stuff like that. And most importantly, the color blending, which is right here. So you can see here that our player has these global variables called global red, green, and blue. And those are his three color values, which are randomly generated on the server. So with an MMO, you have the client and the server, and the client is going to be programmed in GameMaker, and the server is going to be programmed in JavaScript. And if you don't know JavaScript, that's okay. I did. I never. I never actually knew JavaScript until I started making MMOs for GameMaker. I never read really any like JavaScript tutorials. I just jumped right in because it's a very easy and forgiving programming language, much like GML is. So this is the server, and I'm using Notepad++ to edit the JavaScript file. I would recommend that if you don't have anything to edit it with, to get download Notepad++. It's free, and it's pretty damn small. And believe me, you don't want to edit this in Notepad or you know, rich text editor. You want a nice, uh, you want something nice like Notepad++, which is going to show the syntax of JavaScript. It's going to help you. Like for example, I have a couple settings like. If I make a parenthesis, it automatically creates the other end of the parenthesis, which can be a little bit annoying. Like, say um, I forgot one right here, I put one, bam, now there's another one there, I don't need that. But it can be very useful when you're writing functions to help make things a little bit quicker. But you don't need to do that, and that's not really important. So I'm just going to go through the basics of what's going on with the server right now. It's very simple. It doesn't look simple, but. Let me go through this, and um, this is basically my edit of the original thing that was made for 39JS. They have an example that comes with it, but it's, in my opinion, it's really, really sloppy because it doesn't even have a function on the server to tell when the player disconnects. It doesn't even come with that, so that's why I've packaged up my own little starter things to help you out. So right here we have... Um, where it creates the player array and I like to just change this to variables because this is where we're going to create all of our server variables so first off we create an, a little array right here called server and then the first thing we put in server is player which is um, also an array and actually I don't know that might not be an array um, that could be like an object or something I'm not very good with JavaScript all that I know is that this player is definitely an array and it's stored inside of this server 
And I'm actually pretty sure a server is an object, but I'm definitely not positive. Right here we have app listen 420, which basically uh, right here you can switch 420 to whatever port you want to use. So whatever port you have open, I like to use 420 because it's not often used by anything else. Now, uh, right here, we have a uh, player connection, and you can see IO socket on connection. So this is basically when the player first connects, it's got to generate the stats. So we can see here, we create their player ID, which is based on the length of a server player up here. So the first player to connect, it's going to be zero because there's nothing in there. The length is zero. The next player will be one, two, three, four. There you go. Now you have all your players, an easy identification number for each of your players, which is extremely important. Next, we have their X and Y position, which is randomly uh, generated. And if you don't know this, I'm very into roguelikes, random generation. And the MMO I'm currently working on is a roguelike MMO with random generated dungeons, random generated terrain, lots of like different depth, lots of depth to it. So uh, one thing I like to do is just give a player a random start position. And then here we have um, the red, green, blue value, which is also randomly generated. Uh, one through two, zero through 255 is basically what this is. You take the math random, multiply it by how much you want it to go to, and that'll be zero through 255. And then we round it to make sure we don't get any decimals. It's just a straightforward number. Then here we p we make that player object and we give it all these stats and basically what you do here is stat on the player so basically if I want to reference the player ID I'll basically put um, dot x or if I want to reference the player's x if I want to do stat on the player like the one I just created I'll do dot stat on the player right here and you'll you'll understand that more as we go on so I'm gonna put a colon and say I want this to be 5 so I just put 5 there now we got this stat on the player and it's equal to 5 but as you can see here I'm just giving it player ID X Y all these things that we generated up here and then um, map which doesn't matter right now don't worry about that what that basically is is we want to set that up so when we start having different maps you can go to if we even do then that'll already be ready Alive, which is important because you want to be able to distinguish if a player is disconnected or not. Connected, this is something I added specifically to this because it doesn't have like a login or a sign up or anything like that. We have to be able to tell if the player has connected yet. Because this part happens before the player is actually in the game. He will um, get his stats and stuff. That happens instantly before he's even connected. And uh, before I had it set up so that the second you loaded into the game, it would send all your information to everyone and you'd be in the game, but you'd still be connecting. So basically a player could come up and like just wreck you while you weren't even, you're still connecting. So what I did is um, I basically made it so it just sends your stats to just you. And then here we have our message switch, which is going to be really important in a second. But okay, first off, let's start with this. So this is our first time our game is going to send data to uh, the player. First thing you need to do before you send anything, clear buffer. This is really important because if you have things in your data buffer, which is basically what you're sending, both um, the client and the server send data in a very similar, almost exactly the same fact. In fact, the syntax is exactly the same. You start out with the clear buffer. And then we're going to write a string, and the string represents what packet we are using, which is game connect right here. And uh, the way that the original example is set up is um, the packets are identified by numbers, so like it starts out at, I think it actually starts out at 1, and it goes to 2, 3, and 1 would be like player connect, 2 would be player move. But I like to use strings because they're a little bit more costly to send around. But for a small game, it doesn't matter too much. And it's easy. It's way easier. So, like, instead of being down here, case, player, get player, it would be, like, case, just zero. And that doesn't give you much information. So you have to, like, you know, you can just always comment it. But I just really like the strings. You can always change it up. It's really easy. If you prefer to have the... Um, the number identifications you just change message ID to read byte and then instead of um, here where we did game connect we would instead do write byte zero but for I think that you should just stick with the strings honestly I really doubt you care honestly but whatever 
First thing, we're going to send them player ID, very important, X, Y, red, green, blue, and then finally we're going to send the message to just the player who's connecting. And to do this, we're going to reference server player, and then in parentheses, which player, which we're going to be using their player ID, so whoever the player is connecting. And then dot .tcp, that is basically what you're going to use, that variable is where you're going to send information to. So just like how they have blue, green, red, player ID, they also have dot .tcp, which is where you send the messages to. So now, on our client, we have this room called Game Connect with one single object called Object Connect. On the create, we have the DLL init, and then we have the server IP import. Don't, I would not recommend changing the IP because this is your local host. If you were to ever go online and uh, if you wanted to post your game and have your friends play it, what you need to do is change the IP to go to whatsmyip.org or just look it up on Google, and uh, then you put your IP in there. I think mine's like 67.182.182. I don't even know, something like that. I would put that up there. And uh, then people will be able to connect to me. And then you put the server port, which we use 420. And then it's going to connect. Now, when it does connect, it's going to receive the packet that we wrote earlier, game connect, in the switch statement. So uh, basically what this does in the step event is it reads the string if it gets a message. If while receiving a message, it's going to read the string. And the string right here, the first string, is going to be game connect. So after you clear the buffer, the first thing you have to do is write which packet you are going to be using um, as a string right here, which is game connect, and then global PID equals read byte, x variable equals read byte. Basically, we're just reading back the data and putting it into variables. So here we're writing the data from JavaScript, and then here we're reading it into GML and saving it to these variables. Then we're going to go to the next room. And the next room is where the actual game is. And now instead of object connect like we used in the connecting and in room game, we're going to be using object control. Now when control is created, the first thing it does is it spawns you um, right wherever your x var and y var was. It received that from the server, and so it knows now where to spawn you. And the x and y var were randomly generated on the server side right here. And because it was randomly generated on the server and not decided by the client, that basically means that the player has absolutely no say in where they spawn. It is 100% up to the server. Which is another reason why I really like making roguelike MMOs is because you can pretty much 100% make it Im almost impossible to hack. Because if you do all of your calculations on the server, your player has no access to the server. So for example, say someone was like, alright, I want to spawn at 512 instead of whatever Yvair they gave me. Well, that's going to be inconsistent with the server, and so, like, yeah, it may look like on your screen you're over there, but to everyone else, you're in the same position. The server doesn't give a shit about what you say, where you say you are. The server is basically just telling you what to draw. You don't do any calculations on the client. As minimal as possible is always the best way to do it. So then we have object control here, and um, it's pretty much this it's exactly the same as the connect one the only thing is, is the connect one only needed one packet and that's to connect this is where all of our game packets are gonna be we can see here we got player disconnect and player connect those are the only two things the player can do right now connect and disconnect it's really simple right now and then we have uh, you and then you have the player and they don't do anything right now they basically just nod their head and look pretty so um, if we, we can actually see this in action, I'm going to go ahead and uh, compile, alright, I got it right here, hopefully it still works, nice. So it's connecting to the server right here, it's going to generate these stats, and then um, it's going to make the player object, and then it's going to send the data over, and once the data is received, boom, now we're in, and I don't know which one is which, uh, let's see. So we're this orange guy right here, and uh, first thing we did was we read our player ID, we know what it is, we got our X, we got our Y, and then we drew it to that position on the client. And we got a red, green, blue, and it's all drawing perfectly. And so um, I'm going to connect in another player just to kind of show how that works. I mean, it works pretty good so far. There could be glitches in my current system. I don't know yet. I haven't found any so far. It's pretty simple, but we make mistakes all the freaking time. So now we see that we got this other guy, and if we disconnect him, boom, instantly gone on the other one. If we disconnect this guy and reload. Now when this guy gets in, he'll be the only one in there. So that's kind of cool. It's pretty nice, pretty simple. 
So, yeah, see? Only one in there with his randomly generated color. So, um, how does the player know how to connect? Basically, uh, object control, when it's created on the game, the first thing it does is spawn you, then it, do it clears the buffer, writes string, get player, and sends the message. And you'll notice that, that that's, that is very short because the only thing we're saying is just this is the packet we want, we're not sending any data. Like, if we needed to send more stuff, like say we needed to send like zero, we put that there, or say we needed to also send like a string like, you know, fuck boy, let the server know that he's a bitch, then you can go ahead and do that. But we don't really need to do that. All we need to do is say, hey, we're in the game, we need to get the players, then send that over. So once that gets sent over, we can see right here, the um, it's very similar also on the server, which is so nice, the consistency is great. It reads the string, and then it goes into the switch, and depending on what the string was, it'll do different things. So here we got player get player. So if the player is connected, which it shouldn't be connected, because when you get in, your connection is set to zero, first off, set that to one. And basically what that means is, if someone tries to spam this packet on us, it's not going to keep on like redoing it. It's going to be like, no, you already did this, you're going to have to reconnect if you want to do that. Ha, gotcha. Player get players, which is a function, and I'll show that that function is just down here, or yeah, we got a few different functions down here. Clear buffer, like we said, because we're about to send data. Write string player connect, and then we're going to write all of our information here, and send all players map. Now what this function is, it's similar to the uh, send message function. The only thing is, is it just does a for loop and goes through every single player. And if you are on the same app as my player, then you get this packet and you're going to know I'm connected. So now we're going to go look at the object control to see how it de deals with that on the client. So we see here we got the player connect right here. And so... Uh, it sends the player ID, and the first thing that it's going to do is going to read the player ID, it's going to set go to 1, and uh, with every player, it's going to check. Do I already have this player in my game? If I do have this player in my game already, then I don't need to connect him, and go is other dot go equals 0. But if, no, if there was no other player in the game with the same PID as the one I just read, player ID, then we'll go ahead and create it, as long as it's not not my PID because you also got to make sure that it's not the as well as not being the other players in the game you also got to make sure it's not your own player like you're connecting to the game and you send yourself a packet saying that you're connected well you already know that you don't you don't need to spawn yourself an entity you already have object view so we're going to read the x var the y var the red green blue of the player and then we're going to create the player and then with the player we're going to give him all of his stats his player ID red green blue which are his only stats right now and then that player will be connected. The other thing that the player can do is disconnect. And basically, the server is able to pick up disconnections but on the socket on disconnect. And basically, all that does is clear the buffer, as usual, tell everyone player disconnect, tell which player is disconnecting by giving him its player ID. That's very important. If you don't know which player you're going to disconnect, then you're screwed. And then send all the players on the map that packet. Then set them to a live and zero so that way we don't deal with them anymore. And then player disconnect, this one's very simple. Read the byte, and with each player, if his PID equals the PID we just read, we destroy him. That's how you disconnect the player, very simple. And then, um, when more players connect and they try to get players, they want to load in all the players, one thing that this checks is, is that player alive? And is he connected? And if the player is alive and connected, then there's no reason not to send it, so we send it. But if a player is not alive, or not connected, then it's gonna not it's not gonna send it because we have this function right here called is player there. And what this function does is it basically checks is he alive? Is he on the same app? Yes or no. And if it is a yes, then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get we'll get his data and we'll connect him. So that is the basics and it's all a little bit confusing at first, but I hope that was a pretty good run through. And um, since I'm getting pretty damn close to 20 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and just do episode 2 right now where we're actually going to be programming some stuff. We're going to be programming movement first off. So thank you for tuning in to the first tutorial, and I know we didn't really get anywhere, but uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you at least learned a little for the next tutorial. See ya.